Oxygen cutting, often referred to as burning, is widely used for cutting steel. Steel of any size and shape and of almost any thickness can be cut. Straight lines, curved lines, irregular lines and bevels all can be cut quickly and easily with a cutting torch. The flame used to preheat the metal for cutting burns oxygen and a fuel gas, usually acetylene, which are combined in the cutting tip. The cutting is done by a jet of pure oxygen, which strikes the preheated metal under pressure. This oxidizes or cuts the metal. The oxygen and acetylene are fed to the torch through two hoses which bring them from the cylinder. Here the short cylinder contains acetylene, the taller one, oxygen. This ship's bulkhead bracket is to be cut. It has been laid out for cutting and center punched so that the line can be easily followed if the mark rubs or burns off. This symbol means cut on this line. The cutting outfit is always kept knocked down or disassembled when not in use. The first step is to assemble the outfit. The oxygen and the acetylene cylinders should be fastened in position. First, remove the protecting valve caps. Then crack the valves, that is, open them slightly and close them quickly to remove dust and dirt. Keep your face away from the discharging gas and be sure there is no fire present which might ignite the acetylene. Next, attach the oxygen regulator to the cylinder. The attachment nuts on the oxygen and the acetylene regulators differ in size, as do the cylinder valve outlets so that the regulators cannot be installed on the wrong cylinders. Attach the acetylene regulator. The attachment nuts are brass. Tighten them firmly, but do not force or the threads will be stripped. Always use the correct size open end wrench for attaching regulators. Acetylene hose is usually red, oxygen hose green. Either hose is sometimes black. Connect the hoses to the regulators first. The oxygen hose connection is right hand threaded. Tighten the nut, but do not force it. The acetylene hose connection is left-hand threaded. These right and left-hand threads are to prevent error in attachment. Because hose can be easily damaged, handle it carefully. To keep it off the floor and out of the way, it can be wrapped around the handles of the cylinder truck. Next, connect the hose to the torch. For easy identification, the nut on the acetylene hose coupling is grooved. To prevent error in attaching the hose to the torch, the acetylene connection has left-hand threads and the oxygen connection right-hand threads. The size number of the tip to use depends on the thickness of the steel to be cut.
To select the tip, refer to the pressure chart furnished by the manufacturer whose equipment you are using. Always wear gloves when handling steel. The bulkhead bracket has been laid out for cutting on this piece of steel plate, so the thickness of the plate must be known to select the tip. This is half inch plate. The chart shows that for cutting steel of this thickness, a number one tip should be used. Remove the tip nut and blow out the torch head with oxygen to remove dust or dirt. To do this, turn the pressure adjusting screw to the left and open the cylinder valve. Turn the screw to the right and close the cylinder valve. Press the oxygen trigger. Then turn the screw to the left. Insert the tip and replace the nut, but before tightening, adjust the tip so that a row of three holes or orifices is in line with the torch. Always line the tip holes up like this for 90 degree cutting. Tighten the tip nut, but do not force it. Refer again to the pressure chart for acetylene and oxygen pressures to use for half inch steel. The acetylene pressure is three pounds. The oxygen pressure is 40 pounds. To adjust the acetylene delivery pressure, close the regulator valve by turning the pressure adjusting screw to the left, then slowly open the acetylene cylinder valve about one half turn. Keep the wrench or key on the cylinder valve stem, as it may be necessary to turn off the gas quickly. The cylinder gauge on the regulator shows the acetylene pressure in the cylinder. Slightly open the acetylene valve in the torch and open the regulator valve by turning the pressure adjusting screw to the right until the delivery gauge registers a pressure of three pounds. Never use acetylene at pressures over 15 pounds. Close the acetylene valve. Follow the same procedure to adjust the oxygen pressure to 40 pounds. Adjust the goggles in position before lighting the torch and keep them on during cutting. They should fit snugly and comfortably. Always use gloves while cutting. While we're about it, let's see what else the well-dressed cutting operator should wear for his own safety and protection. a close-fitting cap, long sleeves, trousers without cuffs, and safety shoes. Before starting a job, make sure there is no material under or near the cutting table that sparks can ignite. Open the acetylene valve one full turn and light the torch with a flint lighter. Adjust the flame by slowly closing the acetylene valve until there is no space between flame and tip. Now open the oxygen valve in the torch. Adjust the oxygen until there is just enough in the mixture to consume all the acetylene. 
The resulting flames are about 3 16 to 1 quarter inch long and are known as neutral flames. Test the cutting oxygen. The flame should look like this. Now before starting to cut, let's turn off the flame for a few moments. And see what actually happens inside the torch and tip. Here's a cross section view. When the acetylene valve is opened, the acetylene flows out through the tip. Opening the oxygen valve permits the oxygen to flow through and mix with the acetylene in the tip so that a mixture of acetylene and low pressure oxygen comes out the four preheating flame holes where it is burned. When the oxygen trigger is pressed, the cutting oxygen is released through the cutting hole in the tip. Move the plate so the cutting line is beyond the edge of the table. Adjust the goggles. Turn on the acetylene. Light and adjust the flame. Turn on the oxygen and adjust the flow until the flames are about one quarter inch long. Hold the preheating flames on the plate edge until the metal under the flame area becomes a cherry red. Then press the cutting oxygen trigger. Tilt the tip in the direction of the cut as the flame is moved slowly along the cutting line with the preheating flames always in contact with the metal. Notice the distance of the tip from the metal, the way that the flame is slowly but steadily advanced, and that the tip does not waver and make too wide a cut or curve. Hold the torch so that the tips of the preheating flames just touch the metal. One way to move the torch evenly and in a straight line is to steady it with the right hand as the left hand rolls it along the cutting line. When the limit of movement is reached, move the hands and repeat. Hold the torch steady so that there is no side motion or waver when the cut is being made. If the piece does not fall out, tap it with a hammer. Never use the torch for this. To become a good cutting operator, it is just as important to know how to care for the cutting equipment as it is to make a good cut. When the work is finished, the equipment is disassembled. First, close the valves on the cylinders. Then, Open the oxygen valve in the torch to drain the hose and close the oxygen regulator valve by turning the pressure adjusting screw to the left. Press the cutting oxygen trigger to let the oxygen out quickly. Close
close the valve in the torch. To drain the acetylene hose, open the valve and close the acetylene regulator valve by turning the pressure adjusting screw to the left. Close the acetylene valve in the torch. When the tip has cooled, loosen the tip nut and remove it. Then remove the tip. Replace the nut so it does not become damaged. Loosen the nuts and detach the hoses from the torch. Then detach the hoses from the regulators. Handle the regulators carefully as they are taken off and place them where they will not be damaged. Replace the caps so the cylinder valves will be protected from injury. With everything taken down, the cutting outfit is ready for the next operator. In review, wear safety clothes, cap, long sleeves, trousers without cuffs, safety shoes, gloves, and never work without safety goggles. Assemble the equipment carefully. Make sure all connections are tight. Choose the correct cutting tip for the thickness of metal to be cut and insert it with a row of three holes parallel to the torch. Be sure to use the pressures recommended by the manufacturer of the equipment you are using. Adjust the preheating flames until they are 3 16 to 1 quarter inch long. Preheat the steel to a cherry red before starting the cut. Keep the cutting tip at a constant distance from the work and don't move too fast. Good oxyacetylene cutting depends upon how well the operator knows his equipment and the amount of practice he has had in using it.